Okay, welcome to See It and Feel It with Dr. Brett. And I'm Dr. Brett, and today I have the pleasure of being with here with Nick Savage. Oh, nice to meet you, Nick. Hi, um, we just met the other night. I was <laughs> I gotta tell this story real quick. I'm on Go ahead. I'm on with some giant monster. We never did see the fish, but he took a video of it, uh, of the experience. It was like at sunset the other night. And uh -huh. um, and then he sends me the video. And so I have his telephone number, but I don't know who he is right. or anything about him <laughs> until the next morning when I'm on the phone with a little nine-year-old that I coach, a little hockey player, and his phone dies, right? And so I hit dial back. I didn't know his phone dies. And then I get you. And then we're like FaceTimed. Yeah. And then I'm just like in the moment going, hey. Like, and I'm like, Thanks for hello. Like, like, <laughs> totally. Yeah. And then you, I think you might have asked me what I did. I said I was a sports right. psychologist. Right. And then you're like, I coach professional athletes. So here we are with Nick Savage, a peak performance coach, and mm -hmm. you're gonna tell us about your background. How do you, you were an athlete in college, high school, college? Football, yeah. track, all of it, tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, Brett, uh, my family believe heavily in academics and a lot of sports to get to wherever you're trying to get to, mm -hmm. uh, back in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And the education piece came from the fact that you know, Thurgood Marshall from Baltimore before, mm. and he took my dad and 12 other wow. Um, wow. black men and, and said, hey, we're going to get ready for a, a Brown versus school board, so we're going to cut our teeth by using U13. So academics, that's where it started for me to make sure that you use the sport instead of the sport using you. Wow. So, you know, we all were scholars, and so I basically was, you know, a standout in track and field in Baltimore. Mm. Got recruited by about 30 schools, and wow. I played football, too. Now, um, were you a, a quarterback or a cornerback? I was, uh, that's a you? yes. There you go. <laughs> you, you're going to play both ways if you wanted the dogs, yeah, right? Yeah. So I played quarterback, ran the option. I uh, had a blessed team because we were uh, state champs in track. Wow. So I had a 10-2 tailback, uh, Brad And what Donald. were your track events, which was? I was a hurdler, wow. triple jumper, long jumper. So I was state champ. Wow. And Brad, wow. who was a tailback, he ran a 10-2. And then we had a fullback ran 10-8, Quentin Montague, and I ran a 10-6. Wow. So we're pretty quick. And you're talking about 100 meters? We ran meters. an option. You're talking about 100 meters? I ran the hurdles. So hurdle. I ran 13-7. Wow. Brad 13, ran Look at these two. times are, are pretty amazing. I'm thinking... Uh, 40 yards. What, you, what was your 40 for football? 4-4. Four, 4-4-40. Four. Four, 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 that's pretty yeah, tough. I yeah. mean, that's fast. Yeah, that's fun. really good. It was fun. Yeah. So I went to, uh, with a couple other teammates, uh, yeah. went to the University of Wisconsin. Yeah. The Badgers. And um, uh, we went there basically to try to turn them around. So mm. I love being a pathfinder. I love great teams, mm. you know. And so now you had a lot of choices. Why Wisconsin? I was curious about that. I did. Uh, it, once again, it went back. I'd say two or three ingredients, you know, like for the kids to know, um, pick, pick, pick your, what you want to do in your plan A first. So I knew it was going to be computer science. Mm. So I said, okay, let me be a trendsetter. Yeah. That is uh, a trend. That's a, a while ago. Right. right. I'm assuming you're yeah. my age, roughly. <laughs> I'm one of the original PC developers too. Wow. That's so, crazy. So what does that mean? He's one of the original PC developers. Let's, well, let's like break this apart a little bit. Down in Boca Raton. So after I got released by the Dolphins, I had six job offers and one of them was in Boca Raton. Wow. And so I went up first as a manager, um, and then I ended up on as a technologist. So I ended up on the original team working with uh, Microsoft, wow. and Bill Gates, and Steve Ballmer, you know, Mr. LA that's, Clipper owner. That's amazing. The other Mr. No, Gates is in trouble right now. Both <laughs> yeah, Gates well, are in trouble. <laughs> it's a tough world we live in. <laughs> we were just talking about that off camera. Right, it's but, a tricky world. We'll get into that another right, day. Right, but I was a world yeah. trade expert. Wow. Um, and travel around the world there. But yeah. before that, two Marks sent me home, uh, one Mark Dupa and one Mark Clayton. Wow. <laughs> and so that was uh, so, when I started. Yeah, totally. Um, mm -hmm. how, how long did you play pro football for? Oh, I got released that yeah. year. You wow. know, I mean, like I said, you, but you already just, had, they were loaded. That's the year they went to the Super Bowl. 72, so. 71, 72. I'm not that old, man. <laughs> 
I'm thinking about. I was in a hot tub with Don Schultz. Sorry about that. I was in a hot tub once with Don Schultz. So I was in a hot tub once with Don Schultz, right? And I asked about that perfect season or whatever. It was just the two of us in a hot tub. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. This was like a while ago. No computers. Sorry about that. No computers in '72. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Well, the military probably had them. Well, yeah, it was pretty, no computers for the rest of us. Probably so. as big as a house, though. Yeah. So. What was it like to be a pioneer in the industry? I mean, I didn't even know we were going to go in this direction. It's awesome. Well, I mean, that's essentially, you know, you're a sports psychologist. Mm. I mean, if you're a pathfinder, you're a pathfinder. Yeah. So whether it was going to Wisconsin, mm. initially I was getting recruited by Ohio State and other mm-hmm. places. And I think uh, that's when Coach Hayes hit a Clemson player. Mm. And I said, no, nah, I wasn't, yeah, can't do I wasn't that feeling that, yeah. you know? <laughs> especially if he's on the other team, you know. Yeah. Um, and so we say, you know what, it would be real cool if you go. It's different if you go to a machine, right? You go to Michigan or USC or somewhere like yeah. that. You're just plugging into the machine, yeah. you know, it's a sausage factory. That right. you're, you're the next great team. Right. They may remember you, they may not. Right. But if you go to a so. school that um not known for winning yeah at the they were time, they were getting right, thumped yeah. they yeah. were getting beat 56 to nothing wow that's painful it was big yeah. you, you yeah. might remember it was big two little eight mm. okay that's that's what the big 10 was yeah i don't we went remember there. that but yeah you had michigan and ohio wow. state and everyone yeah else. that's right that i do remember. but yeah then uh all the other teams started recruiting right east coast west coast and the south and Bunch of us came from the east and said mm. they put their pants the same way we do. Yeah. Let's let's Do you still have a lot of good buddies from that team, oh, yeah. those teams? Oh yeah. Matter yeah. of fact, we have a, a, a the Badgers have a group of about thirty. Mm. We have a call every month. Uh, they want us to get involved now, you know, with a lot of diversity and inclusion efforts, you mm. know, as we were talking about earlier. Right. Yeah. Right. And making yeah. sure that we, you know, the, the new students can plug in with us. But more importantly, they remember you, you yeah. know, because we were the first bowl team, mm. you know, that. What was it like, you know, Ohio it's State a little Michigan. controversial, that topic, diversity, inclusion, whatever. Mm-hmm. What was it like then compared to now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to instigate. What? <laughs> I'm instigate. Yeah, you, you try to get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, Jamal I mean, can cut anything out. No, like, I mean, in a second. it's no problem. He can cut anything no, out. No, that's a great question. <laughs> um, there was no diversity you, you know basically yeah. there were no head coaches uh, yeah. of color right um, still struggling there yeah. you know there were no more importantly offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators as well so what it means is once if you go to a predominantly white school and you know you're coming from a a, a city yeah. you know Baltimore. man yeah. I had and I went to all black schools before that mm-hmm. you know and Outstanding schools. I look up, Brett, you talking about seeing, I never seen a sea of white. Whoa. Yeah. So remember, at Freaking. Wisconsin, you have 50,000 students. And they're all so, white back and, then. Right. Yeah. And you come in and you're thinking yeah. you're so cool. You don't speak You don't speak to the black guys. Either. You, don't you don't speak, speak. their language. They're no, like no. the sea of white people. But I'm saying, no, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm being playful. You don't even, you don't speak, you know, because, you know, East Coast, you're supposed to have your edge. And it was so right. funny the first week. And it's, uh, this Midwest sort of, that's what right. you're getting. And they're waving. I got it. And they're I waving did. to me. And they're, that's like totally different. And Inner I'm, city Baltimore or whatever, you're somewhere yeah. in Baltimore. And I'm looking like, going, why are you waving to me, right? <laughs> After about three weeks of being alone in that seat, you see the black guy who's way across the street and he's waving like this. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey. hey. It's done. like, help me, help me. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. So it was, it, it, it's, it's a challenge at yeah. first because you really don't have the, there's no relating going on. Yeah, but it was tough. Most of us, where we're from, when you start the sports game, yeah. You're told by your parents immediately. That's going to be part of the day. You better be super Negro. Yeah. Okay. You better yeah. put the S on your chest and be three times like better be- especially than then. what's asked yeah. for. Yeah. And, and don't just. You had to raise your state. Right. Yeah. So you're mentally yeah. tough enough to deal with it. And then, yeah. you know. Who's your hero? Midwest are, yeah. are friendly. Oh, you know? much friendlier yeah, in general. I grew up in. 
Fairfield County, Connecticut, okay. it's not that friendly. Okay. <laughs> it really isn't. And when you go I've to the Midwest, there. you're Fairfield just Fairfield like, University. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you go to the Midwest, it's definitely yeah. friendly, no. without a doubt. I played ball there, Fairfield University. And Fairfield U. Did you Fairfield really? Giants. We played them. I was on a travel squad. So wow. we'd come up to Fairfield and play. Wow. I grew up, you know, like maybe like my parents had a little house in the water. Uh, you know where the reef is in Fairfield? It's called the End of Reef Road. There's okay. a reef there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone asked me the other day, we met through this fishing thing where you right. took the video or whatever. Right. This woman came up to me the other day and says, like, you fish, like, as if, mm -hmm. like, I said to her, yes, yeah, since I was two. Mm -hmm. Like literally our mother taught us how to fish when right. we were two years old. Okay. We didn't have the dad thing right. going that okay. way. Oh. You know, some people don't. But um, tell me, tell us, who was your role model back then? And you know, well, how that changed? I mean, first it would have been my dad. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, like I said, him being a, a pathfinder there, he didn't mm -hmm. have to do that. Um, as far as role models at the next level, I looked at, you know, historically had a lot of roots there with, Paul Robeson, uh, Jackie Robinson, yeah. you know, um, yeah. in the sports world, you know, Paul Warfield, yeah. um, Lynn Swan, yeah. you know, Mimic, yeah. and, and just copy what they were doing. Earl of Pearl, you yeah. know, uh, Bob Dan. Yeah, I was, was a Knicks fan early. growing up. Right? Well, remember, he was a bullet first. <laughs> so, so I grew up, you know, yeah. with him and, wow. and uh, in, the, in the picture. And then, you know, you just pick. You know, Bessie Coleman. Yeah. You know, had a lot of strong yeah. women in the family as well. Yeah. So it was a uh, yeah. Lynn Swan was experience. something else, right? Oh. I mean, that was just. But he copied he Paul Warfield. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. But I was a student of you know the sport. So, and back then, the athletes mm -hmm. lived around the corner from me. Yeah. You know, they weren't making a million dollars. So no. a lot of the Colts. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Orr, Johnny United, so all yeah. of them lived in the community, yeah. and they were part of, you know, your experience. Johnny United, you know, had his kid played hockey with uh, my nephew, you know, that type of thing. Wow. All of them owned liquor stores, <laughs> <laughs> so on every corner, you had Jim Parker, and and then you had Al Namichi, and that was my mentor, you know, wow. first Heisman winner for Wisconsin. Wow. But he, he, was, he was big, and that he passed that year that I came to Wisconsin. But, wow. But those are the type of uh, mm. mentors. Now, you got into coaching. Not everybody is wired that way, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a coach as well, right? I'm mm -hmm. guiding people right. on every level, right? How did, you know, how did you, sh how did your journey shape? You how know, you shift? You know, how did you shape well the said. journey, and how did it shape you, you know, back and well forth said. there? Well, yeah. just what you brought up about the diversity and inclusion. Yeah you realize quickly that my dad and other people had mentored me before I got to that level. There really wasn't a champion um, for many of us when we got there. Mm. So I never forgot that because what I learned as a coach is, you know what goes on in, in that private room. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a champion sitting in there saying, Mm -hmm. Okay, who's going to be on the, the who's going to return the kicks? Yeah. Who's going to be the punt returner? Mm -hmm. Who's who's going to travel this week? Mm -hmm. Who's going to, you know, handle handle uh these tough situations? Who's going to get that key pass? Mm -hmm. You know, with 3 minutes left, things like that. That's a champion. Yeah. And so what I learned quickly was I said, you know, you got to have a champion. And so from that, I knew as soon as I had kids, I pretty much was shelving it once I was done. And I was just working with startup businesses. And then I saw my kid and I was just relaxing and he was playing soccer. And I saw how crazy the parents were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're just, <laughs> they are. Right? They, they only, still are. Right. It was four years <laughs> yeah. old. They're four yeah. years old and, yeah. and they're going nuts or whatever. And they, like you know, they were, and they're yeah. recruiting, yeah. you know, and they recruited, you yeah. know, my kid for some special travel team. And I'm like, wow. he just learned to put his pants on. And, and it's I'll already starting. Yeah, right. I'm like, start, yeah. and, and then you have people that didn't understand yeah. um, the division one or the pro, you know, but they were saying that they were going to keep this unit together mm. 
mm. from four years old to 18. I said, that's not going to happen. No, it's not, yeah, but I mean, it's an amazing know. concept. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not, not realistic. So, somebody's yeah. going to get bored. Yeah. Somebody's going to quit the sport. Yeah. You know, somebody's yeah. going to just get lethargic and, yeah. and do other things. Totally. And it's not going to be too the much same weed unit. or whatever it is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, there's always somebody that's going to yeah, Somebody's going to do drugs. Right. And, right. and they're looking at me yeah. like, okay, yeah. I got a coach. Right. So whatever it was then, so I started picking up soccer. Got it. So you were an entrepreneur at the time, or were you working for I was doing startups, yeah, startups, and next thing yeah. you know, but I, I like being efficient. And yeah. then once I saw I was coaching, and then they came out with this thing called, which was funny to me, called speed training. Speed training. <laughs> and I was, we already had a track you, team. You were your whole life. Yeah, right? and I'm like, like, you're like, wait a minute, I understand. Well, well, for me, Zoom is like that because I've been running my business uh -huh. remote on and off right. for 14 years, 15 okay. years. Okay. So now all of a sudden there's this concept called Zoom, but I've been doing phone and FaceTime since literally 2007, right. 2006, right. seven. Right. Now right? it's funny. And now it's, now it's yeah. like, oh, do you Zoom? And I'm like, well, I've been FaceTiming since like now, guess 2007. What? Like, I've been using Zoom for a decade. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, because he's in a piece of, right. I'm like, I... Uh, I didn't relate to you as a PC guy when I when you're well, taking like we we're making jokes. I've got this creature on, and I'm like, remember I was saying to you, uh, I'm like, is it shopping cart? What are you gonna know I mean? Uh, like, what? Uh, why can't I move this fish? <laughs> I couldn't move the fish for an hour, right, right, and then right. you're like, you know, are you know, are you gonna, you know, am I gonna, right. you gonna get this thing in? I'm yeah. like, no, you're yeah. gonna go home right. because I could tell I wasn't moving it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I just couldn't like. I, I thought that right shoulder was, was going to give thing. out. Well, and, uh, and yeah. actually, I didn't use Zoom for that aspect. I was using Zoom for the sports piece because oh. I was doing um, blogs and I was doing. Are uh, you doing remote clients all doing around remote the country as well? Calls. So you've I been was, doing this yeah. for ten years, you know, yeah. coaching. Not and not to the extent. When you know, did you transition pandemic. into full time coaching and performance coaching and all that? How did you make that transition? I never really just did one thing. I yeah, mean, basically, well, the same way. you know what I'm saying? I've been a, I've called a sportspreneur, you know, sports I've been doing preneur. the same four Pretty things cool. since I lived here 25 years ago. So wow. I, I moved. Um, and what I did was I focused on sports, IT, healthcare, added military, you know, technology and training too. Right. And just do it neighborhood first. So when I lived here in Delray, a couple kids said, I need to get faster. Nice. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then I started a program called Sweat here, Scholastic Workshop for Access and Athletic Training mm. with the Heat and the Dolphins. Wow. And so, you know, and that was still had academics. Mm. You know, we were using sports as a tool to promote mm. entrepreneurialism and education. Wow, fantastic. And just yeah. keep doing the same four things because, yeah. you know, like I said, so the sports kept going. And IT kept going, and right. what I learned from Oprah, Oprah used to speak at our school in Baltimore wow. before she went big and went to Chicago and things right. like wow. that, right? And so she said, just get on bigger stages, and whatever stage you're on, it's fine. You right. know, so if you had a regional level, neighborhood level, national level, so what would happen is I'll start in the neighborhood, right. and then you go regional, yeah. you know, with the sports. Yeah. And so we ended up winning national championships, you know, so I had about... 600, 700 champions now. Wow, so fantastic. Just keep working. You know, I was just listening to a psychiatrist the other day that specializes in brain imagery. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about one of the reasons why kids at 20, 21, 22 can't handle the fame and fortune is it's too much of a dopamine rush, you know, when they're too mm -hmm. young and their brain is still developing. Mm -hmm. The brain seem, ha, seems to keep developing till 25, 26. Right. And so if you throw fame and fortune at a 21 year old, they're just, their dopamine rush is going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is they habituate to it and then they need more of it. And next thing you know, they're assholes or they're doing drugs or whatever mm. it is. Right? Okay. <laughs> Does well, that make any sense? Like, you know, yeah, as a, but it's also, yeah. as you were saying, yeah, I agree with you about the dopamine and definitely the new, the, 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 the newer generations, it, it's gotten harder every time. Harder in what way? I coaching, you every, what you mean? coaching, getting them motivated. I, I, I don't even think you motivate people. You you direct them to find their motivation. Right. And, well right? said. He, you direct them to find their motivation. Right. I'm doing something very similar. Right. Right. Exactly. And yeah. 
And you got to own it. Yeah. And the whole the time yeah. you were thinking, I was saying, well, where's the parenting? Yeah. You know, and that's the dynamic. Kids haven't really changed. Right. Parenting's changed. Yeah. So you have a drone parent, you know, right. and they're in it. You yeah. know, they'll call you and say, why'd you cut my kid? <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> like, hello? You ain't supposed to be a part of this conversation. Right. And it's gotten so now in the, in the new dynamics, they might call a corporation <laughs> and say, why'd you fire my kid? You know, like no, it's it, like it's a, it, it's, it's really a, the dynamics yeah. are different now. So the parenting plus that dopamine rush, you know, because usually if you got a what happens with most people to me with Americans, especially in our hierarchy, caste system, whatever you want to call it, yeah, celebrity and sports guys or whatever it doesn't matter. You got to have somebody around to keep you real. Yeah, and right? they don't, yeah. Keep you grounded. And they have ass-kissers around them, right? And if you just so got... They have that. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, totally. yes. So it doesn't matter what I think that still. happens to presidents too, right? Like big executives, right? They have people that just it's, agree with if, them. If they're rock right. star. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if they can say... And if they're rock stars or, you know, or athletes, the athletes that yeah. always kept... And that's what I always kept. I kept somebody always around and say, Nick you're stupid or you're doing something yeah dumb. totally and and say no well, those were your buddies that just told you how it oh was, you, you gotta have that you was. gotta yeah. have a posse i'm actually you probably are that you said earlier you're a disruptor you yeah. know <laughs> I, I am too meaning like you know i coach mostly adolescent athletes it's probably two-thirds of my business oh, okay. and i'm always keeping it real for mm -hmm. them you, mm -hmm. you say it's so straight no one i call it a frying pan you right. know you hit somebody right. and had right. met a, in right. the face with a frying pan but right. basically you're giving them feedback that other people aren't willing to do. And that the, uh, if you do it in the right way, obviously you're building the relationship yeah. and you have the trust and everything. Right. But when you're so real with people, it, it it's invaluable. Right. Okay? right. So there's so few people that can do that well. Right. Trust the relationship. That's good coaching, right? Well, yeah. You could do it well. Trust the relationship first. Yeah. yeah. And then building... trust of execution. Totally. So I have a, a diver here, for example, mm. and she had two two discs that were messed up. Um, and she's a Olympic prospect. Wow. And training her. I was wondering what kind of diver. We're, right. I was thinking but I'm saying, diving. I don't know. Right. Trust the water right now. Trust of execution is going to be just something as simple as, okay, the first time we met, she was in 10th, right? So I'm not going to say much, right? So then after that, next meet she goes to, she's in six. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, she's in third. Wow, that's pretty good. Now she can see the value, you know, what I'm doing. And yeah. then she takes first. Yeah. The last one she's in, now she's waiting. How much of your work with people is the mental game? You know what I mean? I know you're doing a lot of performance. I was track. leading to that. Like, yeah. Forget the track for now. a second. Yeah. 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 Well, and I'll talk about track. But for the most part, with the diver, I told her, I said, you know, she's a little dynamo. Um, I won't kind of love the up. dynamos. We you know, so, so she's more like a Mary Lou Retton type, right, you know, right. or, you know, the dynam no, dynamic gymnast, right? Yeah, totally. And I said, hey, you got to look long and you got to get in the glint, you know, which is the smile, <laughs> with, you know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you just did it. He just did it, right? And where you do the eyes and I said, so you in a subjective sport, so before yeah. you do your dive, do the nod, do the smile, you know, be the darling, you know, because there's another long swimmer yeah. that is going to look possibly more elegant than athletic. Because, you know, the Got adjectives no, they no, throw no, out, right? Athletic versus No, it's really part elegant. of it. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's right. subjective, right? Yeah. Now, on the track, the biggest thing I'm seeing now is that a lot of athletes don't want to, they want to stay in dress rehearsal, especially now in the pandemic. And you're like, no, at some point you got to perform. Totally. Right? Yeah. So they don't want the meets. It's so bizarre. Like, well, how do you, yeah. And and even the baseball mm. guys, you know, I've trained out here, I'm watching, and you watch their practice, it looks like a game. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, everybody looks like they're yeah. Major League Baseball. I'm always, you know, I, with these <laughs> kids I coach, right? I'm always right. like, you got to ask the girl out. Like, right. you know, let's face the rejection. <laughs> right. And if she says no, that's okay. Right, right. <laughs> like, Lily, someone texted me, he's actually in Europe, and like, you know, he, he like kind of manipulated the scenario uh -huh. with the woman right. or whatever right. because he wanted to find out whether she was mm -hmm. ready to be exclusive or not so instead of bringing it up directly 
he asked her if it's, it, you know, he's going to have someone come sleep over. He did a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, we're not doing it that way. Mm -hmm. We're doing it straight up. If she rejects your goddamn ass, you get right, the feedback right, and then you right, get to improve right, and get better. Right. But it's the same thing in sports. It's right. like, right, you want the feedback right. immediately. You get in the dance. And right? you want balance. Yeah. You know, because I'm good buddies with uh, Steph, Steph Curry uh, and CW, you know, uh, CP3 and wow. um, Michael Phelps agent, right? Hmm. And he spoke for us once and he said, you know, it's all about balance. He said, Everything, all of the clients, whether it's those superstar guys, yeah. they got balance. So, like when my daughter, she was three time, four time MVP, went to Stanford, you know, and the son. And that's mainly why I did that first when you asked earlier. But the bottom line, I told them, I want y'all to have balance. Yeah. Let's not overdo it. It's a little tricky, though, as you know, when, mm -hmm. you know, the Michael Jordan types, that the elite level, mm -hmm. they tend to be wired pretty compulsive. Like, they're, you know, pretty obsessive compulsive about what they're doing, meaning they're so driven. And so to get to the highest level, your personality isn't that balanced. So, yes, balance is totally right. necessary right. for success on every level. Right. But to get there, a lot of times they, they get there by being out of balance. Yeah, but uh, when you yeah. say Michael Jordan yeah. or Kobe, Jordan that is well, I'm saying, like, the, the, you yeah. know, that's the the. the, the you, totally. you know, that's, that's no. different. No. Yeah. But even in their case, they still had an A plan. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A so plan was, being? It, not an A and a B plan. Yeah, it was, no, it was there's a, no backup it was a, plan, right? You know, yeah, it was so, one plan. Yeah, they're all in. And it's all comprehensive, yeah. but not just all in. Yeah. And I think some people interpret that wrong, that you still have those other ingredients. Yeah. You know, because I'm a balanced guy and I'm teaching that, mm -hmm. but there are people at the highest levels that they, you know, I mean, their personality is wired in such a way, mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to, to execute on the balance right, right. until later in life when they have to because their relationships are garbage if they don't, right? Right. Or they're yeah. out of sports. Right? Or they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, their identity is screwed. Right. right. And so, that's what I focus on. You asked as far yeah. as coach. I, I focus on the transitions. Got it. So my organization will focus Fantastic. on the transitions. Fantastic. Yeah, that's very say, cool. You know, because I don't care. You know, we, we were talking, I was talking to athletes last week and said, I don't care whether you're 6, 16, 26, or 36. You're you going to stop transitioning. playing. <laughs> totally. And you don't you want be, that yeah. transition. Well, you've had four different dynamics going, right? So, Well, even with the yeah. sports, you know, like I said, I, if I had to stay just with the sports, my plan was still get vested and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and get the money and let's, Were you let's close get to the next or, thing. You know, when you when you joined the Dolphins, uh, you know, what was that process like getting? Because I've coached other right. NFL players that just, you know, the competition gets so severe and it's so. I mean, you it's know, so you cutthroat at that level, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like you're just gone, basically. You know, and, you you know. Like, here's the thing: you know, yeah. you belong. Right? You know, you're good. You know, enough. you belong to be in the league. It's are you at the right? Team. <laughs> to be appreciated? You Just, mean like to be valued or to be No, because everybody like, forgets a pro is a pro. Yeah. You know, I don't care. It doesn't really matter what a pro is. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're a professional graphic artist or you're a professional athlete, this somebody has a job before you walk in. <laughs> and in the case well, we're males, we the, know that because someone else has a woman before you yeah, right. before you met or right. someone else was with But I'm saying <laughs> when you already had Mark Duba, Mark Clayton, Jimmy Cephalo and uh Nat Moore, and you know, yeah, they, they already had they went to the Super Bowl that right, year. Right, yeah, no totally. Didn't pull it out, but you know, they had a crew. And what year so, was that again? Eighty six? What year was that? Eighty four. Eighty four. Okay, cool. So so you know, so that's you got to get the right alignment of being. Was that Dan Marino days, 84? That was uh, Mr. Dan's uh, first year. Wow. I think it was his first year. Yeah, he went to second year. Yeah, he went to First or second year. Yeah. But it, it was it was that kind. Of, and you had Mike Shula and you had Dan. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the mm. great one was there yeah. as well. So, yeah, I knew I could play, but I was programmed different. Like you said, I was programmed for balance. And, yeah. And I'm already... I'm, I'm, I feel blessed that I'm bone on bone now. <laughs> knees, knees, or yeah. yeah, knees. The hips hurting some yeah. now, and yeah, you know, and you know, I had 
three concussions and I know all that my, you know of we've all had way yeah. more back then because yeah. back in those right. days they didn't right, right. right. all my right. teammates right. Yeah. Uh, you know they got issues and a lot of them are gone yeah you know gone uh, died you mean gone well, died like pandemic uh yeah. the linemen right. can't manage that weight yeah um, after they finish playing things yeah. like that but it's it was a great experience how do you um how do you process fear in your life and how do you help the athletes great that question you, you great know, question how do you do it in your own life and then right. how do you help others? Stay in the moment. Uh, and, I love and, that. And stay in the moment. I say, say this all day long, yeah. seven days a week. Right. Let's bring you back in the moment. Get into the now. Yeah. Yeah. And like one of my track guys, okay, he, he's going to Tennessee, right? And he gets, he's running the track meet two weeks ago and he can't, he didn't come out of the blocks at all. He did go and he's up. a fast starter. Yeah, fast that's, starter. That's a so painful. What does he do? He froze at the blocks. He froze. I said, you yeah. didn't. You didn't mm -hmm. check the. You didn't check. And he he didn't check the starter. Mm. He didn't. He didn't process. I use Michael Jordan in a lot of cases. I'll say, remember the shot. What did? What tapes did Michael Jordan play in the Last Dance against the Utah Jazz? What mm. tape you play? You go back to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't go. Man, if I if I do this right, we're gonna be champs. If I make the shot, you go okay. Step over, cross over, push what's the name out the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fingertips, follow through. You know, yeah, you go you back to your it, basics, yeah. right? That's what that's what Jordan did. He went back to his basics, mm. and in this case, uh, the sprinter wanted to sit and uh, talk about like he was Eminem and that he was, you know. Uh, how you like me now, you know, I'm gonna get my revenge, I'm gonna win this race. I said, no. Yeah, so he was in his head somewhere else, in and, the future, not in the moment. Lost and that the works moment. for yeah. some people. Right. You know, if, if, you, if you got that kind of personality, he's not that kind of a guy. Right. I said, you're more of a surgeon, mm. you're more of an assassin, you're yeah. not that big, you're a 135 pound yeah. sprinter, you gotta run perfect. Yeah, totally. So be more assassin, so you're gonna have to think of your phases when you run down track. Right. You're gonna catch the football, don't think about, oh, if we win, you know, I'm going to yeah, be special, no, exactly. catch it like a diamond, right. look it in, you know, right. just go back to the basics. And that's what I do. I always try to reset them and say, be in the moment. Yeah. yeah. So I come back, you know, to the, the, the fundamentals of the golf swing, yeah. the setup, right. because most of the time it's, I use it as a metaphor, right? right? That we get off in life when our setup is screwy, right. Right? right? And so, you know, the fundamentals of the setup for most people is, you know, learning how to do present moment time what you eat, mm -hmm. you know, your diet, obviously right. affects your moods and everything, right. whether you exercise or not. Love it. These are Love just it. sort of fundamentals, right? And then I'm teaching everybody to meditate, practice mindfulness, right. do visualization and breath work. These are all part of those fundamentals that so how we much come rest, back to. How much rest do you put in with all um, that? You know, I think the, you know, the better, the more consistent your sleep is, as you know, mm -hmm. that's really important too, is to really mm -hmm. track people's sleep patterns. If yeah. they're sleeping, depending, everybody's wired differently. You mm -hmm. know, there are freaks that sleep right. four or five hours, but right. let's just say for argument's sake, seven or eight is optimal mm -hmm. or whatever. Then we need that consistency, depending on how like ambitious people are, right? Mm. The more ambitious you are, the more you need your fundamentals in place, mm -hmm, right? If you're less mm -hmm. ambitious or whatever, maybe you can get away with four or five hours of sleep, true, true. right? Like, or if <laughs> you know, or yeah. if you're totally driven in a certain area that's right. not performance, right. high performance related. Right. So again, you know, the fundamentals are key, and sleep is definitely part of that fundamental. Yeah. Diet is part of it. Right. Meditation for me in my business, in my practice, in my life is part of it. Yeah. Like and I'm teaching everybody to meditate. That's the biggest yeah. thing I've changed. You know, yeah. like, you know, what would have been done five years ago versus 10 years ago. Mm. And the blessing of track, track helps all the other sports because they always believe in energy system usage. Right. Right. So yeah. you got to align it. So the biggest thing I've added probably in the last five years is a lot of active rest, which would be the yogas, the Qigong, yeah. the Tai Chi, mm -hmm. the Pilates, or real rest. Yeah. And less Meditation. less training. Yeah. Less training. Because yeah. that's what I'm seeing with most people. People are over training, is that what you're seeing? A lot like of over training and like the guys that we're getting ready for pro um, this year for the draft. Uh, the training every day 
you know. Well, they're probably feeling a lot of pressure through the, the psychology it's of not it. not going to do yeah. it. Yeah, but probably the psychology is the pressure they're experiencing, and that's part of the reason they're overtraining, right? It's the so, swag. Yeah. I mean, like swag. I said, it's, it's, it's the yeah. whole, yeah. hey, you know, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm a celebrity crazy. already. You're like, they no, you're not. They rock or whatever. Yeah, you're them. not. You're not <laughs> yeah. a celebrity. You know, and they start, you know, flexing the pecs and <laughs> squeezing behind. And I have to keep telling, you know, my guy who was a phenomenal uh uh, you know, my son's a great trainer. Um, he helped, he'll help me because he was All-American in football. And then there's another gentleman in Miami, uh, Johnny uh, Tadaro, who does. And I said, Johnny, you're, you know, he does a phenomenal job. But I said, focus, make sure you focus on him. He did that this year, which was great. But it, it, it gets funny watching the whole swag game where you're like, let's get there first. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Brett here. Hit like and subscribe. And if you really want to support us, sign up to our Patreon.